There's a famous poem by Robert Frost called Mending Wall. Maybe you read it in school. It's about two neighbors fixing a stone wall between their farms. You've seen these old walls before in the countryside. They act as fences along property boundaries. Every year the permafrost wrecks it and the two neighbors mend it. The one neighbor says about the damage that something is that doesn't love a wall, that wants it down. But the other neighbor responding through his own worldview, his own mental model says, good fences make good neighbors. So what's your mental model? Many people buy into the belief that it's best for their neighbor to stay on their side of the fence because it's safer for us. It frees us from actually engaging with our neighbor. But what does the Bible tell us? Paul says in Acts chapter 17, verse 24, that God made us to live on the face of the earth. And he has marked out our appointed time in history and the boundaries of our dwelling place that we should seek God. It's not by accident that you live where you live in 2021. God has you there for a purpose. Jesus says in Mark chapter 12, verse 30, for us to love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, and with all our strength. So God wants to be a part of every facet of our lives, not just church on Sunday. It's a total, comprehensive, whole life gospel commitment. And he goes on to say, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Loving your neighbor as yourself isn't found just once in the Bible, but eight times. He makes it a command, but he doesn't leave us out there on our own. He gives us the Holy Spirit to enable us. So we show love to our neighbor. We show them compassion. We look out for their well-being. Cut them some slack. Serve them. Make God bigger towards them. Your neighbor is struggling and hurting through COVID as well, but it's an opportunity to take that fence down and be a bridge for God to your neighbor. Engaging our community for Christ starts with engaging those around you, your neighbors. That's why it's the We Love Winter Challenge this month. Don't get so caught up in all the trials and ailments that accompany this present season so that you end up missing out on making a difference while you're here on planet Earth. Look, life's about more than being faith consumers. It's about being Christ's disciples. What's your telos, your purpose in this life? I'll tell you, it's to glorify God, to make him bigger. So like Paul says in Ephesians chapter four, put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and malice and slander on Facebook. Oh, I'm sorry, did I say Facebook? Be kind to one another, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. And then let's get on with it. Paul says in Galatians chapter 5 verses 14 to 15, For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, watch out that you are not consumed by one another. Let's make the main thing the main thing. For I have decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. So let's rally together in unity and be involved in a cause that is greater than any of us individually. The Old Testament scholar Christopher Wright says, we ask, where does God fit into the story of my life? When the real question should be, where does my little life fit into the great story of God's mission? God has a destiny upon your life. I encourage you to step into it by faith. Thanks for tuning in. Remember, God loves you and his mission is your mission. Let's be a bridge. It's time for you to step up and be a bridge. Be a bridge. Be a bridge. Yo. Be a bridge. Be a bridge. Yo. Yo. Be a bridge. Be a bridge. Be a bridge. Don't go to church. Be the church. 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 church.